Okay. Cool. She's here. She's here. What about here? What's... We good? Okay. I think we're good. Good. Let's go. I've, it's just occurred to me that once again, like, we'll work it out. I'm just going to turn my phone off. Sorry. That's all right. She's a popular lady. Um, good morning, everyone. Hey, friends. Um, I'm Sarah. I'm Paige. And this is Two Pearls in a Pod. Um, we're back for a little morning ep, and I feel like I'm just, I've just been gifted the most beautiful, like, warming cup of tea, and it is just everything I need in the world right now. I'm so happy. Um, guys, winter has finally arrived. Can you tell all the vibe? <laughs> the vibe is so different. You might actually see us wear our jumpers to the end of the episode this time. I feel like the last time we made, when we caught up, mm. it was like oppressively hot. And basically mm. as soon as we turned off, the weather switched and it's been cold. Truly. Like it started raining like an hour later and it hasn't stopped since. There's fluff in my nose and I can feel it. <laughs> um, so like, oh, winter is imminent. Winter is coming and... I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so good. I can enjoy my tea. I can enjoy my knits. It's great. It's great. So, yeah. Well, welcome back to our channel. And if you're new, welcome. Um, this is where we chat about um, what we're working on, some projects that we finished. We are meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Um, we are very grateful to be here. And we've got some things to chat about. Yeah, we do. Should we start off with what we're wearing? Yes. You go first. You okay. go first. Because I know, I know how passionate Sarah is about your face. <laughs> I know how passionate she is about this particular This page. is just like my peak autumn jumper and I'm finally able to wear it, which makes me so happy. This is my tulip sweater. Lovely. I also love the blue flecks in there. Like I can really appreciate them. You should show up close probably. This but. is a pattern by Melody Hoffman of B Mandarins. Um, it is using one strand of Isaiah mohair held together with one strand of Rowan felted tweed DK, which has, it's just like a beautiful, like warm, fluffy, but it's got like a quite an open gauge. So like, it's not too oppressively hot with the mohair. Um, I've made it quite cropped and, um, I just love it. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Um, for those who are new, when Sarah knitted this and she started wearing it, her actual words were that this is a favorite, her favorite thing that she's ever knit, ever. So <laughs> I stand by that. It's up. Like, really, nothing's overtaken since. Uh, probably, probably not. Actually, there's things that I love as much as this, but I think this was the first thing. Name one thing. My Ingrid. Oh, okay. I just love that. Yeah, okay. I like yeah. my cut. Like, there's lots of things that I love, but like this was the first. This is my first true love. Your first love. This is my first true love. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. It's really nice. I really love the blue flecks in it. Oh, and Sarah also, didn't you dye this yarn? Yeah, the so the, the felted tweed initially was a funny sort of grey green, light grey green stone colour, which um, I didn't love. And so I dyed that brown and then held it together with a brown mohair. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, I am wearing an oldie but a goodie. This is the balloon sweater by Petite Knit. Um, I'll show you sort of what it looks like. I made it huge because I wanted like a really oversized look and I've just tucked, it's like a high neck, but I always tuck the collar in a little bit because I think it just, I don't know, I like the shape a little bit better. Um, I have said this, I said this before, you look so classy. Like the high neck <laughs> and like the oversized. It's very like balloony. Oh yeah. my God. It's just so classy. Beautiful. So this one, the, this jumper was early days. This is the third sweater that I had ever knit. The first one, well, I started making a Klein, the Klein sweater. Mm -hmm. That was my first knit, but I didn't finish it. And then I moved on and then knit a Sunday sweater and then came back, finished the client sweater. And then this was the next one. So it was pretty early days. And I knew I really wanted an oversized piece. And the previous, the Sunday sweater that I first knit, like the first one, I knit in an extra small because looking at the measurements, I didn't do gauge swatches then. Cause I just, honestly, I didn't know how to at that point. <laughs> I didn't know what they meant. I didn't know how to adjust things according to gauge at the time. Um, but the Sunday sweater in the extra small was like quite 
small and like fitted mm -hmm. which was it, it's not super fitted but it just wasn't um the oversized look that she had in her pictures which was the look i wanted and so i thought oh you know how you fix that like clearly whatever i'm doing is making them really small i'll just go up two full sizes um what i didn't really consider though is that when it says like to knit 10 centimeters or 12 centimeters and not number of rows i should have done it from the size I actually wanted. Oh, I see. Right, 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 right. But alas, it still worked out. It's like, so beautiful. Because I just knit it to the length that I wanted. Yeah. But I think when it comes to things like the cuffs and the neckline, I think they were probably a little bit long. And also like increases and stuff. But whatever, it's fine. It worked out. The other thing that I did that um, I low-key, I, I kind of regret. However whatever it is what it is is my yarn choice so at the time i only knew about morris and sons in the city i didn't mm. know about any other yarn stores mm. i also like hadn't really delved into buying yarn online because i just didn't so your know. only like choice of yarn was what was at that particular shop exactly which is um a reasonably limited thing yeah it's yeah. relatively limited um I also didn't know about like any nice overseen yarn, overseas yarn. Mm. So yes, what I ended up knitting it with is a hundred percent alpaca from like my like my alpaca oh, nice. held together with Rowan. That's um, why it feels so case. incredible, but it's unnecessary and it is so dense because yeah, it also looks I didn't really think about like adjusting the gauge or my needle size. So I still knit the entire thing on four millimeter needles, <laughs> holding those two together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so dense. So it's like a DK it's, and a mohair it's on a, a four. It's really heavy. Like if I took this off and gave it to you, you'd be like, <laughs> it's really heavy. Um, and unnecessarily expensive. I think it cost me over three hundred dollars to knit. Yeah. Okay. Look, so these are the lessons we learn. So <laughs> I regret it not because the garment's not nice. I love the garment. I just think that there was a there were better ways of doing it. Could have been done. Um, yeah. The final the final thing is just stunning though. Oh um, my gosh. I 100 percent justified it at the time though on my little like you know medical student budget <laughs> because I was like you know the amount of hours per dollar oh, ratio yeah. is excellent. So I didn't regret that. But yeah, if you go ahead and do it, I wouldn't recommend this yarn combination. <laughs> There are better ways but the pattern itself from what i remember anyway i was able to follow it it was the first time that i learned how to do german short rows oh yeah um was for this pattern and it was well enough explained for me so i'd say it's beginner friendly um and yeah it's a nice sweater i should like i kind of want to make it again but there are a lot of whips in progress so we're <laughs> to, we'll talk about that later great speaking of which let's talk about have you got any finished objects uh, mm, I've got a half finished object. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it was going to be a finished object, and then yesterday I got distracted. But alas, I saw this on your Instagram, and I just for a second I was like, wait, I thought this was like some guys. It's so <sighs> random. <laughs> so let me run you through this week. I decided to cast on a new thing that wasn't in my make nine at all on a whim. And then I also decided actually it's not working out. So I'm going to make something else baby related instead. And I found this really cute pattern for little booties. And can I just say, this solves the gifting problem. Oh. These are so easy and so quick. And so cute. And so affordable. Yeah. And so cute. And so gender neutral. And just the oh perfect God, okay. baby gift. Like, I can't. Okay, anyway, let I me show you up close. It's like perfect. Oh, hang on. Don't look at me. There we go. Okay, look how cute they are. Um, so these are a pair of little booties. Um, I will tag the pattern name and designer in our description. Um, the name of the pattern is called the Baby Hug Boots, which is very cute because they're like little Ugg boots. <laughs> Um, and I just knit it with stuff from Stash. Um, so I Perfect. used the Ulysses, like some Ulysses oh, yeah, yeah. yarn by Jerome Natura, uh, which is, I'm pretty sure, the first time I've ever been able to say it. <laughs> 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 
um, which I actually got as like Sunspun in Melbourne. If you buy one of their memberships, they give you like a little birthday like skein of yarn oh, cute. per year as part like included in part of the paid membership. Um, so the brown color is that, but I it's meant to be eight ply and that's a four ply yarn. So I held two together. Oh, so sure. it's a little bit denser, but I kind of like perfect. that. It adds a little bit more structure. structure. And then in terms of like the Tweety cuff and sole, because come on, look at look at the sole. Like, don't look at me. Look at the sole. Um, I knitted those in heirloom merino fleck, which was just leftover oh, stuff of what yeah. I had. Um, I am part way through the second one. It's oh. knit flat. This is a cute bag. Yeah, we can talk about that if oh. you like. Actually, no, we shouldn't talk okay. about it. Never mind. No, the reason why is because I'm not proud and it's probably not an ethical purchase. So okay. I probably won't. Good. Probably wouldn't recommend Ignore. it. Ignore. Never mind. Um, on. Anyway, you knit it like flat. Oh. Like, I mean, and then you darn it or seam it together. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and it's really easy. Like, I've only, I'm pretty sure from here. Yeah, I just, I've just kind of broken the yarn to knit the cuff and then I'm done. So you knit flat and then seam it together and like I've only got like maybe that much more to go and like you've got a whole booty. Ah, so it's, it's like so a small. Swatch size. Yeah, you're right. It's you're so right. small. And like they're just so cute. Everyone just loses their tiny mind over they're like so cute. Oh, good present. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I think it's like the perfect present idea. Yeah. Um, I have to say the only thing I need to get my head around is like a nice way to seam together. Because mm -hmm. this one, I seamed from the inside and on the sole it looks neat and stuff. Mm. On the back it didn't look neat, so I kind of like did this, I don't know if you can really tell, like this like stitching over the top oh, yeah. to hide the messiness to make it look neat, cute, which yeah, I kind of yeah. like. But I think you could, if you're a double pointed needles, needles person, this is so easy to convert the pattern onto double pointed Ooh. needles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the other thing is all the increases are knit front, uh, knit front back is that how you say it knit back front that, that one it's like knit you know, the front and the back of the stitch yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um i think if i was well when i i will definitely be knitting these again when i do this again i'm going to just do normal increases and decreases because i think it would like make, make them a little bit yeah, yeah 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 i think it would be a little bit neater like Maybe. at the front like it's not that it's not neat it's fine but i think like i would like to have like two like center stitches sure. going down and then like little make ones left and right on cute, the other cute, side cute, to make cute, it like cute, extra cute. neat yeah um but yeah and as i said double pointed needles friends would love this I think as like a not having to seam it together there are some people who've done that I just I tried doing it magic loop and it was just too uncomfortable no. for me especially so, when it's so tight yeah it was too it was too fiddly I ended up knitting it over and over just because I was trying to do that and then I just gave up no, no, no. and it's very easy to just knit flat so yeah. Oh my god, this I, I just I can't even concentrate. I think it's just like, oh my god. Also blocking, I, I didn't to be fair, I didn't look on YouTube, but there's not a whole lot about like how to block little baby booties. Um it blocks it's pretty niche. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> um really easy. I just like wet them. I didn't do a full soak, no. but I I could have, but yeah, you could do like a full soak if you want to, because I knit them quite tight. Mm -hmm. um, the structure was still pretty good. And then I just stuffed them with tissue and then molded them oh. to the nice shape that I like. And then just let them like fully dry, like in open air. They would dry honestly within a day. Um, so yeah. And I think the, the tissue, I just changed it out once yeah, okay. and it just like worked out really Perfect. nicely. And like, they're like quite, yeah, quite structured, really cute. Oh my god, I'm so impressed. Yeah, right. I feel like this is right up your alley. Oh, I'm just like, oh, I'm already thinking about how many pairs I'm going to make. I've got, oh, it's life I've got a changing. few to do. You well, have to, you've changed my life. I'm going to make so <laughs> many of these because I reckon there'd be like three or four babies born in my vicinity and I just can't keep up making nah, like bigger garments blankets. for them. Yeah. Um, and these still feel really cute and, and special. I'm going to, um, the, the baby's name is Hudson and I'm going to like, like put a little in this little H. like little H, <laughs> like, um, is it, what is it? Double stitching. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, duplicate stitching? Duplicate stitching. Oh, good one. Good one. Good one. Anyway, so that's some one kind of finished object. <laughs> nice. Nice.
My first finish object, I don't, I can't show because I already had to give it away. And that is the Monday Sweater Junior that I was making. Oh, I really wanted to see uh, that. Show um, me pics. Or show I us all pics. took it to my friend's one-year-old daughter's birthday Cute. on the weekend. And I'm seeing her this week. I'll see her soon. So hopefully I can just like, I mean, I can put a picture up of what it looks like flat, but that's not nearly as interesting as seeing it on like a little bubba. Yeah. Um, I think someone... Someone said in the comments, they're like, Monday sweater, the neckline is always small. Like, it's too small. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, like, I mean, it's fine. I think it'll be okay for her. Like, I yeah. gave it a really good start. <laughs> like, I heard something start to snap, and I was like, okay, stop. Like, <laughs> no, that was my, that's enough. <laughs> that was my stopping point. But someone on the com some, someone left a comment, which was basically like, this is a recurring issue. So, mm. um, for future reference, if anyone is going to do the Monday sweater junior for a little kitty cast on more stitches like start lower down your raglan if that makes sense yeah okay just trying to think of other ways is it like one of those ones where you do it and then you fold it and then sew the two bits together you cast on in rib and then you go to stock in it and then you sew down yeah um, is it so down or is it pick, or is up? It pick up i can't even remember now because i wonder if you could also right, right, Sarah kind of well no i was also just thinking if you can modify like if you do a really stretchy cast on to begin with and then sew down as opposed to mm. picking up you might also get around that problem because it would be really stretchy i think the issue wasn't the cast off it was like just the number of stitches just was, stitches alone was too, okay. too limiting well yeah there's only one way to fix that. oh it was a pickup oh no it wasn't i remember ignoring anyway <laughs> So. Um, but it looked really cute and I can't wait to see her in it because it was I really love that yarn combo. Oh and the yarn combo changed me. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a great but yes, that's my first finished object, which is love. Fun. Um how many whips do you have? I've got can I I've got one other finished object. Yes, which please I can show. go, go, go. Okay, so this is like another like speedy uh finished object, but this is my Oh my god! No <laughs> No, sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, I... Also, you know how I feel about hand-dyed yarns for, like, things like this. Like, water bottle covers or, like... I want... Okay, look. I, so, basically, I wanted a hot water bottle cover for me to take when I go hiking. Yeah. So, this is, like, one of the... This is a really, like, common brand of, like, hiking drink bottle. And a lot of people, myself included, when you're... Like, you don't want to take too much stuff. So this will double as a hot water bottle at night. So you like fill this with hot water and then you take, put this in your sleeping bag. But oh my God, I wanted, I wanted just a little like sock thing or something. So you're not like hugging your water bottle. Yeah. But also like it gets a little toasty initially. Um, so I just wanted to make like a hiking hot water bottle cover. That's so cute. that's what I did. Um, I used some hand dyed yarn that I bought last year at some point. Oh, oh, look, look. Okay. <laughs> this was not this hard to get on before. Okay, hang on. <laughs> You're really selling it. <laughs> Sorry, there's so many analogies. <laughs> <laughs> so inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's good. We're all protected. Here. We're here. <laughs> um, so, but the theory is that I. Just have something that like just keeps it a bit cozy. Perfect. Um, anyway, <laughs> start at the bottom and then work up. And then what I did was I knit a casing and then put elastic. Oh, love! Around it. And then just cast oh, you off. just cast off. Yeah. yeah. So you do like this, like cast. Oh. Like how it's did like, you it's knit like a, the casing? It's like a double knit. Oh. So you kind of. I like it. Yeah. So that worked kind of well. I, like, I don't know. But this is just like a fun little project I'm into it. and it used so little yarn. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, maybe this will use, I bought like a hundred gram skein and it used like 20 grams. How satisfying is that? That's how I feel about this. Yeah. This little booty as well. So I still have all of this left. Um, this is called Twisted Ambitions yarn, which I think someone said it's somewhere from the States. Oh. I bought it from a shop in Australia but again another like great project I'd say if you've got any um like hikers or outdoorsy sort of people in your life or you just want a little cozy for your emotional drink bottle yeah 
emotional drink i meant emotional support drink bottle <laughs> sure that too <laughs> um but yeah another like fun little project that's really cute i like yeah. that i've actually thought about doing like little like like tea cozy tea like teacup cozies and oh cool. yeah, 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 well. yeah 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 i feel like it's for me it's in the same vein i yeah. like it for household objects um if anyone's interested in like i think a pattern is a stretch but if anyone wants to know how to make one of these i'm gonna try and like write it down so let me know love it um but that's my other finished object love thanks for sharing i actually speaking of i like i've knit with the baby hug pattern for these but it's the first time that i've like done it that i'm like i kind of want to change so many things and i'm like maybe i just write a new pattern yeah but i'm not that person yet make a few more let's see how you go <laughs> What's um, next? Have you got some have you got some whips? I have too many whips, but I'm not going to show the ones that I showed last time because cool. okay. it's too many. So I'm just going to show a new whip. Which I'm embarrassed that I have started. Um so Sarah got me all excited when she was knitting her Monday little sweater for a baby. And then I wanted to knit a little sweater for a baby. <laughs> So I started knitting a baby storm sweater. Um, I actually Is this attached to anything. Which no. Okay, because this is stressing me out that these. It's like... fine, whatever. <laughs> if you care, it's fine. We all know how to pick up. Yeah, no, I'm just right. Okay, fine. Okay, it's You're fine. Very, very blasé about loose stitches. I think I just want people to see it more anyway, and like picking it up's not that hard. It's fine. So anyway. So then, yeah, Sarah was knitting one, so I wanted to knit one. Um, and then this is actually the second time that I started knitting this because the first time I was holding it together with some Izzia uh, mohair, um, knowing it was for a baby, thinking, is it okay, is it okay, is it okay? And I was like, it's not no, okay. It's not so I had to do the whole thing and then did it again. <laughs> so here we are. Um, I'll show you guys up close. It's super cute. Um, this is one of those ones that would definitely look better, blocked for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but yes, it is such, such an easy pattern. It is so easy and satisfying to knit because it is all just knit and pearl stitches making up the entire mm. pattern. Um, it's really pretty. I love broken rib. And so there's little chunks of broken rib there. Um, you may ask, Paige, how come you knit this when it's not in your make nine? Nah, that's just... Guys, I don't know. I am an impulsive person. Did I mean to film a video with Sarah talking about and advocating for non-monogamous polyamorous knitting slash non-monogamous knitting? Um, no, that was not deliberate, but it is who I am as a person and that's what I did. Um, as I started knitting it and I got this far, I realized this is way too big for a newborn. So, especially because it's not even blocked yet. Like it's like, it could almost fit me. <laughs> don't you reckon? No. <laughs> okay. No, but you know. But like, they'll grow into it. This is not newborn. Um, so then I was frustrated and I was like, I can't do another cast on. And then I decided to try out the little boots. Yeah. They worked out like a tree. Oh. I'm still obviously going to finish this, but I might make this like a gift for one of the bigger babies. Because there's so many. <laughs> yeah, literally. Or save it for like a first birthday. Yeah. And just be that organized person who already just has it ready to go and gives the gift on time. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm so at. impressed. This pattern on kids looks oh, I've it's seen quite so a few cute. people make the kids and it just looks so good and I'm very very intrigued. It just it's such a good oh, it's I such love a good it. kitty pattern. It's oh, also oh, like so a cute good. little vest. Oh also in terms of yarn, this is leftover yarn from my silly slipover. Oh, that's where um, I've seen it before. Yeah, it's the petite sorry. Well I mean it's a petite knit pattern, but it's a Bendigo Woolen Mills um yarn. It's not Woodlands, which is a newer flag. It's, it's the... called it was called Alpine. They don't do it anymore, but they always come out with like some sort of flag. Like, Tweety, exactly. Excellent, it would have been around fifteen dollars for two hundred four hundred meters of yarn, um, <laughs> of eight ply yarn. Yeah. To clarify, yes, yeah, so two hundred grams. Yeah. And I'm not even halfway through, and I've almost done. No, I think I'm about halfway through, maybe. And you've basically and I've like almost pretty done the body. much done the body. Um, 
this is all I have left. So my plan was once I finish casting off, I'm going to see how much I have, weigh it, and then split it, split it for sleeves. And I think like, you know how baby sleeves are never like really long? Yeah, well, they always roll up because they're, 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 they're torsos are like. Exactly. Yeah. So that know, you know, or a vest. So I'm not stressed what, about oh, it. Oh, that'd be cute. Yeah. yeah. So that's my plan. Um, and it also feels good to knit from stash and like finish off like a colorway of things that you've already made your garment. And yeah, you're just not going to make something else for yourself. Yeah. yeah, it's nice, nice to, and makes like I've made something like making something fairly substantial. So yeah. that feels good. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show a whip that I am going to, like, I'm going to put aside. Like, it's going to, it's going into, it's going to hibernation. That's big of you to, like, volunteer that straight away. Like, I just need a break from it. <laughs> I, I do this, like, in hiding. And I'm, I do I'm, it shamefully. <laughs> I am openly declaring I, love it. I need a break from this because it's quite taxing. Yeah, totally. Um... But I've done a fair bit of work on it and I think it's really beautiful and I really <gasps> want to show it, oh. but I just need a break from it. So I'm obsessed with this. Um, I blocked it. I blocked the yoke as well, so I wanted to show that. Sorry. Oh no, sorry, I even like together. steam blocked it. I haven't properly blocked it. Every time you bring this out, I'm like, can't wait to the <laughs> new cast this on for next week. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the Euless Genser by Sam Garn. It's from oh. the Soft for Women book. Um, it is knit in one strand of mohair. I'm using Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colour Elderflower, which I have gushed about at length um, before. Don't be mad, but I might <laughs> knit this exact pattern Good. Oh in my this gosh. exact yarn. Because yes. it's, so, oh, it's so soft. It's so lovely. I wasn't expecting it to be this soft. Um, also, excuse me? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Look how tiny those stitches are. So this is why I need a break from it. Is okay, because fair. like the whole the body is worked on a three mil needle. The cuffs were on a two point five. Yeah, cast it on next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm. It's really beautiful. But I've, now that I've done both sleeves, that was my like marker to be like. Just put it aside for a while i need some like some maybe some instant gratification or something i just need a little break from it but i just wanted to show because it's just it's looking beautiful yeah i realized the one the one suggestion i might make for people who do make it is the pattern has short rows but they're built into the ribbing and they're so it's such a small addition and it disrupts the because the it's twisted ribbing yeah. that it's not worth it like it's just this Oh, like it's like, I don't know, I'll see if I can show it without dipping my tea in the, the yarn in the tea. Hang on. But like, it's going to be really hard to see, but it's basically like just like a centimeter or something or of short rows. And all it does is kind of make the twisted rib because it, when you're going backwards and forwards, it was hard for me to keep track of the yeah. twisted rib. So you'd recommend just don't? I wouldn't do it. I don't think it adds anything. I this is so oversized that I don't think it needs short rows. And I think it just... I think it would stretch it out trouble. enough anyway to It was more trouble than it's worth. And so that would be my one suggestion is skip the short rows. But apart from that, it's beautiful. It's just... Oh, sorry. It just occurred to me that it's literally short rows. It's not even like just adding increases. It's No, they get you to do short that. rows in the ribbing, no. in the twisted ribbing, and it's so small that it's not worth it. Yeah, no. Um, I love it, but maybe maybe later in the year. I just need to... Yeah. I just need to... I just need to rest. No, but I feel like it, <sighs> there's no point in forcing yourself through a program. Well, I'm not enjoying it. Like, yeah. So I just need... To, and you were. Off. So, I was. I was loving yeah. it. Like the like, like doing the yoke was so fun and so exciting. And now it's just stopping it. Yeah, I feel like that's often what happens with me too. Like that's yeah. kind of where I'm with where I'm at with my like beloved Christmas sweater. <laughs> oh sure sure yeah. sure yeah yeah. Um, do you have any other? Whips? I've got one more. Yeah, go. Um, it's just a pair of vanilla socks. <laughs> just a pair of vanilla socks. Oh, the colours. Girl, I'm so proud of you with these colour Is this the one that I told yeah. you about? <laughs> <laughs> Who did, who's surprised? Surprise, surprise. 
Um, so I love, I love the color, the color combo. <laughs> yeah. So this is a sock set I got at the Australian Sheep and Wool Show last year. It's from a hand dye in Australia uh, called Hodgepodge Skeins. Um, and uh, when we were there, like Paige just told me you should buy this yarn, and I was like, okay. <laughs> she just blindly was like, okay. Add to we, cut. Were, we were just kind of, I think, in this haze of like, there's so much yarn, just like buy yarn or something. Um, anyway, I'm finally treating myself and, and like getting around to making this pair of socks. So I'm using the Summerly I'm So Basic sock pattern, which is my go-to. I'm using a. I'm still like this is part of my quest for my perfect sock. Yeah, been there. It's a good quest. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm doing a 72 stitch sock on a 2.25 mil needle. Yeah. Um, the only, so like, look at these colors, they're just so good. It's so pretty. Um, with the little maroon. I love off. the accent, yeah. Um, the one change I've made is I'm doing an eye partridge heel, because I just think with a hand dyed variegated yarn, I think an eye partridge kind of looks cool. It does look cool. So that's my one thing. I don't know if it'll show. This might be a bit much for it. Oh yeah. Stun. How cool. Stunning. But this is just my little um, tram project at the moment. And I love yeah. it. Very pretty. Good work. Thanks. Um, I have two acquisitions that I totally forgot about until just now. <gasps> Go ahead. But they're not, it's not yarn, it's, they're books. Oh, let's see. What? Have you got any acquisition? Uh, no, anything else to but show? there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like, there's just like one more thing. There's this thing. The so it's, well, I think we've saved Go it back to last. Go get you. I have that, those two acquisitions Go and I have one other thing that I was how could I forget? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I know! <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for this. The hype is so great. Okay, so I have two new books which I purchased. So one of them is the final edition of Pom Pom Magazine. <sighs> Do you know they're still making stuff though? They're just not doing regular. They're not just. Yeah. I was I was happy to see that like I got an email from them. Um, they're still going to be producing stuff, just not maybe on break. Essentially, I was like, I want to have the last copy, like yeah. the last edition. Also, um, also the pattern on the front is one hundred percent me, and I so badly want to make it. I see you. Um, you guys have all probably already seen it, but it's this little set. This jumper is everything I love. It's so it's cool. So, it's so cool. Um, and I also love the pants. And you guys know oh. I'm going to end up making both. Oh, I didn't Ooh. notice this pattern. Hello. Anyway, there sorry. are some. Sorry for reference. We're gushing over over this 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 number. Amazing. Um, but let me get. There are just there are some there are some oh. nice things in here essentially. Um, also, I think that these all double as like beautiful coffee table kind mm. of books as well. So yeah, sure. I never feel like too naughty about buying them. Mm. So it's called Fortuna's Fortuna's Hill. Um, we love this. We love this pattern. And then there's a better picture of the yes. set with the pants. Just imagine me doing this pose. That's going to be me <laughs> once I knit this set. Amazing. Okay, great. So we got this awesome um, magazine slash book. They're like, they're like nice weighty magazines. Mm. They feel like little books. And then I got da, 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 Arctic Knicks. <laughs> what did I just say? Arctic Knits. <laughs> um, this is by Wei Shin Chan. I'm really sorry. I, I haven't checked how to check how to do the pronunciation. Do you know the pronunciation? I'm not sure. I, I didn't even know that. She, I mean, obviously she has a real name, but she's just the petite knitter. Yeah, she, to me, she's the, the petite, petite knitter. knitter. Um, so this is her book. It's her first book with a bunch of um, different knitting patterns of hers. Anyway, we were just having a little bit of a flick through. So I'm actually not 100% sure if all of these patterns are like not available as single patterns. Um, I'm sure if I actually did the right thing and did my research beforehand, I'd be able to find out that information. But she does talk, like she does talk about her book a lot on her Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, the projects included within this book include six jumpers, three hats, three mittens, and three pairs of socks. Nice. Um, which is quite nice. Um, and I wanted to show you, well, I guess starting off, like the petite knitter is a very aesthetic Instagram. Yeah. In general, that I love to goals. follow. Uh, it is goals. Um, 
she was talking about like I, I was reading one of the chapters in this book that was talking about how she stores her knitting because oh, she yeah. has pictures of it on her Instagram and it always gives me a little bit of anxiety because she kind of has it like out like on, on like shelves? on wooden shelves it's very just beautiful. out yeah and it's so aesthetically pleasing and stunning but every time internally I'm dying thinking like the moths <laughs> like especially because she uses I'm sure like beautiful different um yarn combinations mm. and then i was reading in, in here where she talks about how to store your knitwear and she says how oh well where she lives because of the climate there are no moths oh and it didn't even occur to me yeah so that's why oh. she can because <laughs> she's yeah, imagine not having like, to be worried about that ever and so she life. just yeah it's just risk-free which i thought was awesome um but the whole thing is like an ode to the arctic and like all mm. her kind of favorite knits oh, so beautiful um the one that I want to show you guys that I'm really excited about, or the most excited oh about. Let me find the picture. Well, I don't think, oh, hers, her book is structured where she doesn't have like all the pictures in one bit and the patterns in one, and bit. one bit. It's all like, like mixed within. Yeah. Which, to be honest, does kind of make more sense to me generally yeah. as a concept. Yeah. Um, however, it's a bit tricky when you're trying to not show the pattern on here. Okay, so. All right, so I may or may not make the hat as well, but I want to make the Alpine Packer jumper. Um, here's a picture of it. Oh, can you see? Wait. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see it there. It's got little alpacas on it and it's so cute. Oh my gosh. And then there's a picture here of her wearing it with the matching hat and it's got little alpacas. Um, I'm going to South America for the second half oh, of the year. And can you imagine how cute it would be if A, I was around, like knitting it there, B, rocking around with a little alpaca yes. jumper. Yes. Um, and it's also like subtle enough that it's like not too in your face. It's not too alpaca ring. Yes. Like, okay. Oh I my God, it looks so look good. Look at that. Yeah. Ah. So hang on. I'll show you these pictures as well. Ooh. I hope that this is focusing. Yeah. Come on guys. So cute. We love it. We love that for me. <laughs> Good acquisitions. Thank you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is I'm actually basically just asking for permission. So, you know uh, Florence Miller? Yes. From Handmade by Florence. I'm familiar. Yes. Everyone knows Florence. Um, <laughs> talking so, about aesthetic queens. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you noticed on her Instagram, but she was talking the other day about how she's knitting um, like one of the norway oh, olympics yeah. ski skiing team jumpers yeah and i know that um inga from knitting traditions thank you i just had a moment then from knitting traditions has also knitted her one which was the 1994 um version so florence has said let's do like a knit along together and like share what yarns we're using and what pattern we're gonna do and things like that and I kind of really wanted, like, I'm getting so much FOMO and, like, I'm added to the group and I really want to oh, do are it. You? Yeah. Yes. I really, 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 really want to do it. Imagine, like, a peak cozy winter jumper, like, working on over the next, like, few months. Oh, I have so many whips. Whatever. That's the thing. I know. Yourself. I've already made a point of, I don't You've care. asked the wrong person if you want, like, a genuine unbiased. <laughs> okay, but it gets, it gets more complicated. Mm -hmm. It also means I need to get new yarn and the yarn problem is a problem is it like in the scheme of things is it a problem no um what i might do is after we finish filming this video maybe i take you upstairs to show you because i was telling jacob he was like yeah obviously knit that but just use yarn you already have i was uh, like jacob it's jacob, not that simple understand. it's also <laughs> color work so i don't want to like mess around with Different, different yarn, no, yeah, no, like, not about that. and especially for that kind of pattern, like you want no, it to you be, want to be smooth. yeah, exactly, and you know, Cascade Two Twenty is where it's at for that. 100%. So, do I buy Cascade Two Twenty? I think you do because I mean, I, I again. Just go for it. Just do it. Whatever. Okay. If that's the case, then after we finish filming this video, you need to help me look at the yarn and just confirm mm -hmm. that I do not have things in stash. That could work. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, help me choose what colors. I think I want to make the Salt Lake City version, which I can't remember which year it is. I will give you a photo so you can pop in the video here. Thanks. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's my favorite one. I did think about doing the 1994 one, but lots of people have already done it. And I kind of think like I wanted something that's a little bit more wearable for me. Cool. Um, you'll like it too. I'm excited. Yeah. Good, good, good. 
Okay, what are you ready to, this is what we've all been waiting for. What are you gonna show us? Okay, so um, a few apps ago, we kind of mentioned this thing where we were like, oh, how do you quantify the work that you're doing in a knitting project? You're right? so excited, I can see. <laughs> and so we kind of arbitrarily on the spot were like, oh, it's kind of like how many beanies? Standard is, beanie unit. How many, how many beanies like in a garment or like how much work is it equivalent to if like if one beanie is like your kind of base unit and we're talking about like a basic beanie we're not yeah and i wouldn't even say like you know the is it the oslo hat like, yeah we're not talking one of those like i feel like that's quite energy intensive so basically what i did was i kind of invented this like i don't think this pattern exists i don't know it's basically like using a standard adult beanie which is stockinette in the round so like all knit stitches using about a hundred grams yeah of a dk weight yarn on a four mil needle as your kind of like mm. standard adult beanie exactly and using and i did a bit of maths and a bit of calculations and i like wrote up a file to so that <laughs> we can calculate the standard beanie unit of any project that like you want to input into this kind of calculation and so dirty but i love it <laughs> it like makes me so happy 2 a.m and i'm getting these links from sarah going play with it input things see <laughs> so um the one thing i haven't worked so i've, I've written a i've written an html file um as a calculator the one thing i don't know how to do is make it a website so what i've done is i'm gonna upload a uh the, the html file for you to download if you want to play with this but i thought we could just like do a few to like show people i mean it's it's a work in progress but i kind of i'm really excited about it and i thought like let's put let's put some patterns in and yeah just kind of show how it works how cool would that because i feel like it's you know when you see on ravelry difficulty and it gives you numbers of stars and i'm like it's five nothing. it's five stars it's really difficult or is two stars it's, and two stars really easy or the other way around and also it does mean nothing it means nothing and the same with like time when people are like oh how long did that take? yeah it's like that's it's the, hence yeah. the need for the standard adult beanie unit i feel like it's like mental energy for yeah. like the pattern yeah so okay. I've, I've got it here oh, yeah. and if i'm clever enough we might see, i might see if i can put the screen recording of us doing this on, but anyway so oh. like basically you know you say to like so the way like the way that I developed the starting being a unit calculator is you say like two balls of a hundred meters per ball and you're using a four mil recommended size and the one thing which takes maybe a little bit of uh, more nuance nuance thank you is like your interpretation of how difficult you think it is. I put a few proposed things in there. So a complexity factor of one is all knit. So like garter stitch flat or stock net in the round is a one. And then I've said all over color work is a complexity factor of two. And then between <laughs> one and two <laughs> is kind of like what you think the pattern is. Yeah. So I don't- Vibe it. Do you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. vibe it. <laughs> So like if you're doing a cardigan, so a flat stuff in it, but so you've got to knit a row and pearl row, I said that's a complexity factor of 1.2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. But that's, that's probably the only bit that's like a bit up to your personal kind of thing. Anyway, so I've said if you're doing two ball, like a, a beanie of two balls using 100 metres per ball and you're using a four mil needle with a complexity factor of one. I would use an iron weight or something. And how many you use two balls at? I'd use one Aran weight, 100 gram. And that would have how many meters on it, do you reckon? 150 or something? Yeah. And you use what, a four mil needle? No, I'd use like a five or a 5.5. .5. Yeah. I like it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your face. It works. It works. It works. <laughs> so basically, if I then say like a pair of socks. Wait, sorry, can you just change it to Neil says 5.5? .5? How does that change it? Yeah. <laughs> this is 
This is the one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I think the thing with needle size is it has to be recommended needle size. Because if you say, like, if you normally go down a needle size or something, then the numbers are going to change and it's going to not reflect. Yeah, for that sure. Makes sense? I think as well, you can personalize it by just changing the complexity factor. Yeah, exactly. E.g., if you think Sarah's all over color work is actually the equivalent of, wait, no, sorry. If you think <laughs> um, you're like a beginner and knit one per one is the equivalent of Sarah doing all over color work. Like you then can that's adjust your complexity and factor change too. your complexity factor accordingly. Very personal metric, that one. Mm -hmm. um, but I was going to do like, so I was thinking like a pair of socks. If I say uh, like a, was it 350, like one skein of 350 meters yep. on a 2.5 mill needle yes. and it's got a complexity factor of like 1.2 yes that gives us 3.4 that checks out um what's a pattern that you're working on the storm uh, what's your storm sweater okay my storm sweater is so number of balls is one, one. meter age is 400 yeah um size needle is recommended is 4.5 but i did on a four we're going to 4.5 because we do Complexity factor, I'd say 1.2. 1.2. That gives you a standard adult beaner unit of 2.1. Yeah, do you reckon that's fair? Yeah. Oh. Okay, maybe I was a little bit. I think this is a complexity factor issue. Lot of boring math later. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, so we've got to go because we are going to a little like mini high tea vibe in the city. It's. Um, I bought tickets for us to go into this like diptyque cafe pop-up in melbourne <laughs> which is the most mean thing ever yes diptyque as in the candles that i always rave about um so they release like these gourmand kind of scents and i'm really excited and so sarah and i are going sarah's definitely in it for the croissants and i'm definitely <laughs> in it for the candles um sarah also has a really bad sense of smell <laughs> So she's going to be smelling the candles like, mm, like mm, this is amazing, love. <laughs> where's the jam? No, <laughs> yeah, truly. I can't smell, so I'm going to a smelling event. But anyway. No, it'll be great. But yeah, we'll love you and leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.